Hey there, and welcome back to e-commerce marketing school. I'm Tony, your host. And in this episode, you'll hear from Ali Mitrovich, the creator, designer, and owner of Ali Rose Co who started a quarantine hobby of making stickers and has turned it into her full-time job. And in my opinion, part of what made her so successful so fast was her social media strategy. So in this episode, we'll dive in and learn what she did to grow an audience of almost 40,000 people that continue to drive growth for her business today. Let's dive in. All right, Ali, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Good, good. No, we're excited to be here. I mean, excited to have you here because we don't, often get a lot of um, advice in this area, right? Social media is pretty hard because there's a lot of different areas of social media that can affect your business, obviously, which sure. is, uh, social media that can help businesses, but at the same time, consistency is kind of what you lean on now. So I'm excited right. to dive into all of it. So Me too. Um, I, I guess wait. just a, a quick intro. I, of course, gave a little intro about you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself and like how this yeah. all happened. Yeah, cool. So um, I've always been creative. I then went into college and I majored in graphic design um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I fell in love with hand lettering specifically. So I got an iPad and I started hand lettering oh, nice. digitally. Yeah. And so then once I graduated, I ended up graduating in the peak of the pandemic. So I had, yeah, I got sent home from college in March, um, got bored, bought a cricket. And if anyone's listening and doesn't know what a cricket is, it's basically a, a fancy, is, huh? okay. It's basically a fancy cutting machine. It sounds really boring, but it actually oh, is like really cool. A, sh- those are the big ones. Um, no, it like it's an intricate cutting okay, machine. Okay. So you upload your file and then it can cut out any which pattern you like. It's how I started making my stickers. Yeah. So you can cut out really intricate patterns and that's where I started making stickers. Um, and I guess we'll get into this more, but basically I had posted a video during quarantine about me making these stickers and it went viral on TikTok at the time. It was on my personal page. I didn't even have a business name. There was none of that. Um, and then I started to get people who were interested in ordering it and fast forward a couple of months, I was like, you know what, I could make this a full time job if I stuck to it and expanded more than just stickers. And then September of 2020 is when I officially launched Alley Rose Co. And now I sell t shirts, stickers, stationery, all that stuff. I will say so since I had a graphic design major, I did have like some doodles and stuff. And I had put them up on Etsy as digital download files. So I had an Etsy page, but I never shipped out anything. It was I had like five orders from family and friends that (laughs) probably just felt bad for me. So once people were starting to become interested in the stickers, I then put them up on the Etsy. But I think I like typed out my name, Allie Rose, on like Times New Roman and made a profile picture. It was nothing. It wasn't like an LLC. It was nothing (laughs) like that. So got it. Okay. Okay. Well, I do want to say, I I know that everyone listening, like, it's very intimidating, right? Because uh, people think, well, well, if I'm going to have that kind of success, I need to like viral on a social media platform, but you keep your business afloat, now, oh, yeah. obviously. Um, so kind of, I guess, talk to me about like the shift between, okay, like I went, I went viral, some people heard of it, and then now I'm going to make this a, mm-hmm. a, an actual business. What does that shift look like in terms of, I, I really want to hear about the actual behind the scenes, but in terms of social media specifically, yeah. you now have this audience that you have to cater to and it's not your personal account anymore now it's it's going to be a brand account like what what was that transition like yeah so what i ended up doing was i I didn't post too too much on that personal page to begin with so once i started to gain a following i started to create more content around the stickers because again i was still bored in quarantine still people were liking the sticker content and i knew that they were following me for that reason because once you go viral you get those followers for what you went viral for which can help you or can hurt you if you go to viral for something that you might not want to it doesn't really help your brand that much so i (laughs) started oh oh i could write a thesis on that um so i ended up removing all of the personal tiktoks of like the random stuff that i was filming for fun and then i made that my business page so that i kept that following um changed the username made a profile picture The thing is, is people always want to rely on going viral. And I'm guilty of that, too, because there are times when a viral video can literally change the course of your entire life, your entire business, everything like that. But once the the thing about going viral is that you gain those followers, but then you want to start to create a connection with those followers. So once you gain the following from the viral video, you don't want to bank on going viral again. You want to more so create a relationship with those followers and create more content that caters to the reason that they actually followed you from the beginning. So in that case, it was I wasn't showing my face at the time. My video was just strictly a voiceover with a tutorial on how I did the stickers. (laughs) So I stuck to that when I first started. 
I also didn't have like a huge business background. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have the intention of making it a business. So I just stuck with that and okay. my following continued to grow. And then I started to make it more kind of like a tutorial basis because that's what my followers liked. And then once you start to react back and forth to them, comment, you gain a relationship and then they're going to start liking any of your content, regardless if it's what they initially followed you for or not. Right. Okay. So we covered this. I know we already said this, but uh, becoming viral, right, is is maybe what, what kickstarted this. But right. people think that, you know, becoming viral, they're just going to get a flood of sales. When in reality, that kind of sets an audience up for growth. But there's a ton of work you have to do after that, right? So you were absolutely like, engaging with them and you you realize that oh they liked this content i'm going to give them more of this type of content and for those of you who don't know who are listening the content she did specifically which i know she mentioned was just a how-to video and the, the cool thing is, is you guys can do this with your business too like it, it, just because you're not making stickers at home doesn't mean you can't walk around your facility or your manufacturing or your fulfillment center and just kind of show behind the scenes because for you oh, yeah. right ali was all behind the scenes people loved getting in uh, behind the scenes view um, yeah, th that that's pretty really much cool. all it was. Yeah. And people like to see, you know, you, you make your business look all flashy and nice and you take nice product pictures and blah, blah, blah. But they really want to see, you know, especially being a small business. I know most e-commerce mm -hmm. are small businesses being a small business. They want to see the process behind it and the hard work that goes behind it and the grit that you takes to, you know, get your business up and running. So people prefer to see that. Whereas you don't want to be an Amazon. You don't want to just show your stuff, you know? Totally. And I, I think too, there's a different element of this. And I, um, I, no, I don't want to like here, just over compliment here, put you on a bit. No, I'll just do it. So I've been following your account now for a while. Like I've seen, <laughs> you know, how you've grown on social now for a little bit. And I, it's not really the brand that, you know, I follow it for. So me and Christina on the privy team, she's the one who showed me you, she loves your brand yeah. and, um, it's you, right? Like you, you didn't just post just photos. Like it was your voice. We kind of, kind of got to know you. We kind of got to know like, oh, she's from Baltimore. There's a couple like Baltimore designs in here, even though I'm from California and I thought all of your photography was in like Florida <laughs> or California, which is really, really cool. But the, that's the, the best compliment I've ever gotten. Oh Thank yeah. You so much. But the thing is, it, it wasn't these overproduced shots. Like I can tell a lot of your product photography well maybe it's not this way but it looks like your friends are just taking pictures of you and they're amazing yeah. like the photos are great because we don't care about the quality we just the quality is really good but it's not what we care about we see like you smiling yeah. with one of your designs and we're like oh dang like i love her i want that shirt i want you know i'm a 30 year old dad but i want the hot girl walk shirt you know what i'm saying like <laughs> uh, there's <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, not really. Well, that thank would you be, for that. You know, a gift uh, for someone else. But anyway, <laughs> no, I yes, support it 100%. it's just cool. <laughs> no, no. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I do. I, I mean, yeah, I agree. I think that a lot of people think that the production is the most important and they pay so much money for like brand photography and for all these things. But the truth is, is that when people follow a small business, they're not sm following the small business just to like it's you're not a target people don't expect you to be like that so right i prefer for my business to put myself out there in a friend way i want to become friends with my followers so yeah i make my stuff really casual i want it to feel relatable i want people to support me for me as a human rather than the stuff that i put on t-shirts okay so i want to kind of get into what you mentioned earlier about engaging and forming a relationship with your followers because in my opinion this is this is the most important part mm -hmm. um i've worked in like a, a similar position where I would need to kind of grow the audience of something and posting does almost nothing. Uh, posting is like 5% of it and 95% of it is oh, actually yeah. talking to people who interact with the post. Um, mm -hmm. So can you kind of give me a, a bit of a, not like a, maybe like a day in the life of what's, what's your process? Like if you're gonna, you know, you, take some photos, edit them, post them, engage, like kind of what that, what does that social process look like? Yeah, I actually made it a 2023 goal of mine to be better at responding to comments right away. But what I like to do is at the end of the day, like once I post, you know, one or two Instagram posts or TikToks, I'll go in and then I'll respond to all the comments. The thing that's nice about TikTok especially is that when you respond or when you get a comment, if it's someone asking a question, you can respond with the video. So a lot of times, a lot of my videos that get a lot of traction that get me a lot of sales is me answering a question in video format, responding to someone's comment, which I find very helpful. But truly, my favorite part of 
interacting with followers is through Instagram stories. Polls are so important. The questions box is so important. Not that you need to be asking Q and A's, which can be beneficial, but you know, like, what do you guys want to see from me? Like, what kind of content do you like to see from me? What are you not liking? What colors are you wanting for apparel? What colors are you wanting for ink? Like, getting them to feel like their input is going to be in my next launch, I think, creates a lot of, um, you know, like, relationships. And then, as along with that, I share my personal life on there, too. So, I have a personal Instagram, of course, and I don't post everything on my business Instagram pertaining to my personal life. But, you know, I'll be like, hey, going on a walk right now. I'm going to get dinner. I'm doing this this weekend. And it gets people to interact. Hey, what are you guys doing this right. weekend? You know, what did you eat for lunch today? Stuff like that is what really gets people to like Completely. your business for um, you. Yeah. And I, that's one of the things that Christine and I were saying that you do so well. So you, you make, you have a mix of like this personal life, which you don't, you don't overshare. Thank You're you. posting some pictures from a Florida vacation or whatever it is. And then you come back and there's all these prints that some of them are like the right. designs, just the straight up graphics of the designs. Other them are somebody smiling, wearing the shirt. It's, it's brilliant. So thank you um, so much. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, of course. So if, if people are listening to this and they're like, okay, well, I'm not on TikTok. I don't like being on camera. I, you know, don't want to share my personal life. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. they're just kind of uncomfortable with this idea, or maybe they're on social and they're, they're just not kind of getting it. Um, yeah. What is some of the most useful advice that you've used yourself by, um, that you can give to others yeah. here? I have a few things. Well, number one, my thing that I'll tell everyone is that consistency is key. You can't just ghost a social media page. You gotta be consistent. Try and post at least once a day, but try and do more than once a day. Another thing is, is that you don't have to show your face if you're not comfortable. Like a lot of my videos that did well, for example, my first one was, it just showed my hands. My voice was in the background, but and barely even my hands, you know, like content doesn't have to show your face if you don't want it to. Yeah. But the last thing is, is it definitely helps. And I wasn't comfortable showing my face. I just think it's like, you know, how people can't listen to their voice back. They can't listen to their voicemail, yeah, stuff like that. Telling me. That's how, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I feel. So I was very apprehensive of posting my face, talking on stories and stuff like that. But the truth is, is that with time you get more comfortable with it. So you might think right now that you don't want to ever show your face, but you probably will get to the point where you are comfortable enough. And the last thing is, is to just talk to your followers like they're your friends. Talk to them like you're on FaceTime with them. They're going to appreciate it. They're going to enjoy it. And then you're going to grow a following of consistent and loyal followers. I 100% agree. If, if you guys are sending your descriptions or your comments to three other departments to get approval, that's not the way to do it anymore. Just freaking respond uh, and talk to them like yeah. you are, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, well, sure. Allie, this was amazing. Thank you so much for kind of lifting the curtain on your process and, and how you grew so much with social. If you guys aren't following her yet, uh, she's on Instagram at Allie Roseco. You have almost 40,000 followers on there. That is almost 40. Impressive. It's wild. Two Thank years, you. less yeah. than two years. It has been a wild ride. That's to say the least. Cool. And then of course they can see it in your Instagram, but um, is it AllieRose.com or AllieRoseco.com or .co? What yep. are you? AllieRoseCo.com and it's A L L I E. I know there's a lot of different ways that people spell A L L I E. Um, yeah. RoseCo.com. And if you guys haven't yep, checked it out, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone too for listening uh, to e commerce marketing school. Now, if, if you're listening to this podcast with Ali and I uh, and you want to watch it, you can actually go to YouTube to the Privy channel and watch the whole thing in its entirety. Or if you want to see us in your feed, you can find clips of this episode and all of our future episodes on Instagram at ecom marketing school and if you're on twitter you can find me at tony from the pod so thank you for listening and i will see you guys next time bye